There's a lot of competition when it comes to large diaphragm condenser mics under $1,000. But after spending the last six months or so with the Loughton LA320 in my studio, I can say without hesitation that this is the first one I'd recommend to almost anybody. Heck, even if your budget is way over $1,000, I still think this mic is worth considering. And if you don't believe me yet, stick around because later in the video, we'll compare the LA320 to a $30,000 vintage Telefunken 251. I think my favorite thing about the 320 is that almost everything I record with it just sounds finished. It genuinely makes my job as an engineer easier. You'll hear this for yourself later in the video, but I find that on so many different sources, the 320 gives me almost exactly what I want to hear right off the bat without needing to apply tons of EQ or processing. I just put the mic up and I'm like 90% of the way there already. And that can be so invaluable during sessions. Just knowing that as soon as you record arm the mic, it's already going to sound great. That's what I look for in a microphone. It means I can start recording sooner while the excitement and the energy are there. There's no bigger vibe killer in the studio than when somebody has a new idea they want to throw down, but you're sitting there tweaking EQ settings for five minutes to try to get the sound right. I think a big part of this finished sound comes down to two things. First is the fact that Lightwin really leaned into the tube and transformer sound with this mic. Like depending on the rest of the circuit, a tube mic can sound crystal clean and clear, or it can sound thick and colored and weighty. Lightwin definitely went for the latter with this mic. It adds some really nice subtle compression and rounding of the transients, which can help things sit better into the mix. And I think this extra color is especially nice for home studio owners who are plugging straight into a clean interface, just getting you that much closer to a finished sound. The other aspect of this mic that helps you get the sound you're looking for right away comes down to these two switches on the front. First, we have a 120 hertz high pass filter, which I actually find incredibly useful on this mic, not just for cutting out rumble, but for shaping the sound. With the high pass off, this mic has a pretty massive low end. So with this switch, you can decide between big and beefy or lean and clean low end. And then over here, we actually have a low pass filter, giving you the option to shape the high end as well. With it off, you get a very upfront, sparkly, modern sound. Flip the switch and you've got a slightly darker, smoother top end, allowing you to shape the sound of the mic depending on the vibe you're going for. Working on a modern pop track, keep the low pass off. Then maybe the next song is a more chilled out acoustic track, boom. One flick of a switch and you're ready to go. So let's actually hear this thing. Here's a clip from a session I did with singer-songwriter Julia Alsaroff. We used the 320 on both vocals and guitar, miking up a vintage Magnetone M15 amp. And on both tracks, we had both the high and low pass filters engaged to get a slightly darker, more vintage sound. Who's gonna catch you And that's with almost no processing. The guitar just has some reverb added after the fact, but is otherwise straight out of the mic. On vocals, I cut about three decibels around 500 hertz, added just a touch of compression, and of course some reverb, but that's it. It just sounds great straight out of the mic. You may recall me saying at the beginning of this video that I've been finding the 320 useful on a ton of different sources. Well, let's just run through some of my favorite uses for it. Here it is on bass cap. and acoustic guitar. And drum room mic. And finally, mono drum overhead. The first time I tried this on drums, I was so tempted to buy a second one to use as my main overhead pair. And if I hadn't literally just gotten a pair of those Rupert Neve small diaphragm condensers for overheads, I definitely would have. I still might at some point though. I don't need it. I don't need it. 
Anyway, I was so impressed with this mic that I wanted to really put it to the test. So I decided to put it up against an actual vintage Telefunken 251 on vocals, just to see how it compares. Oh, how I wish I had told you in a gentler way instead. Oh, how I wish I had told you in a gentler way instead. So Mike A was the Loutin and Mike B was the 251. Honestly, I was pretty blown away by this. Both mics sounded great and depending on the song and the singer, I could see preferring each one in different situations. And I honestly didn't expect to say that going into this test. I mean, we're comparing a $700 mic to a $30,000 mic here. That's insane. And what's even more insane is that both the singer and I ultimately preferred the Loutin for her voice. We felt like the 251 maybe got a little bit abrasive in the upper mid range when she dug in a little bit, which didn't fit the vibe of this particular track. The 320 on the other hand stayed nice and smooth and the extra low end felt like a big cozy hug around her voice. Let's listen one more time and I'll do each line back to back so you can really pick up on the differences. Oh, how I wish I had told you Oh, how I wish I had told you in a gentler way instead, in a gentler way instead. I think this mic could easily find a home in just about any mic locker. I mean, I own a ton of mics, including some that are much more expensive than this one. But since I've owned this mic, it's found its way into pretty much every session I've done. And at such a great price point, I think it would be a great option for a first serious mic, a first forever mic, if you will, for a lot of home studio owners. Between the flexibility from the high and low cuts, to the natural compression and color from the tube and transformer, to the just overall great sound quality, it's gonna cover a lot of ground for you. And even as your mic collection grows, I don't think you're ever gonna outgrow this mic. And full disclosure if I didn't mention it yet, but Loughton did send me this mic to try out, but they have no say over what I put in this video or if I even make this video at all. Despite being a small channel, I've been sent a bunch of stuff to try out and the majority of it has never made it into a video because I didn't think it was especially cool or useful or different, because I didn't end up using it in my sessions, because I didn't think it would help you guys make better music. It's a lot of work to make these videos, so I only wanna put in all that effort if it's for something I'm genuinely excited about, something I tell all my producer friends that they have to check out, something that makes my job easier or more fun. But anyway, sorry, didn't mean to go on a full on rant there. I just wanna let you know that when I say I dig this mic or any other mic or plugin or whatever I talk about, I really mean it. But anyway, if you wanna try out the LA320 for yourself, I've got a link to grab one down in the description. And if you wanna check out some of my other favorite mics, be sure to check out this playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.